We talked about sleep a minute ago, but let's talk particularly about sleep apnea and whether that could, could really directly lead to Alzheimer's disease. Well, if sleep apnea is an indicator that you may be having vascular problems, mm. um, um, then that can eventually lead to neurovascular problems like stroke, which can trigger the disease. So sleep apnea is just not a good thing to have for both your heart and your brain mm. because of the effects on the vascular system. Um, MS, you want to ask me about MS? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. Did you just read my mind? I did. Wow. I, I knew you were smart. I did. I but that is I went right in there, man. Uncanny. Um, what about MS? Is there a connection between Alzheimer's and MS? Remarkably, there's not much of a correlation between MS and Alzheimer's disease. So you, you, inflammation is involved in both, but, it's a, but MS is, a, is, is pretty distinct from Alzheimer's. But there is a connection between Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. In, Parkinson's disease, the pathology could eventually spread from the area where you, of, that controls movement, where you, have, you make the neurotransmitter dopamine, mm -hmm. and it can spread into those areas of the brain eventually where you have learning and memory issues. So you can see Alzheimer's like pathology and symptoms later in Parkinson's. Same thing with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's can eventually move into the regions of the brain where Parkinson's mm. um, uh, is involved. Um, so that's just spread of disease. Um, but what's more interesting is that for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, Lou Gehrig's disease, frontal temporal lobe of dementia, and all these, you're getting pathologies that have a similar um, way of killing nerve cells. And in my lab, we found that um, these pathologies bind reactive metals like copper and iron. And then this creates free radicals to be made as the metal interacts with the pathology. So this is yet another way to make the nerve cell sick and kill it once you have the pathology. And it seems to be universal against these different neurodegenerative diseases mm. that reactive metals work with the pathology to, to uh, bring about nerve cell death. So I, have, um, uh, so I started a company back in 1997 that's uh, still going. It's in Australia now. It's called Prana. And we have a drug basically called PBT2 that takes the metals away mm. from um, the pathology and redistributes the metals. So the metals were, were stuck on the pathology. They were causing free radical damage. And then you take the metals and let them go where they're supposed to go in the brain with this type of drug. And actually, uh, with the drugs in trial for Huntington's disease and Alzheimer's uh, disease, and we'll have the readouts on those clinical trials as to whether they worked. Um, this year, mm. um, um, probably well before the summer. So stay tuned for that. One of the themes of, of our discussions, of all three of the discussions today, is that even though we are Cure Alzheimer's Fund and studying Alzheimer's disease very specifically and trying to attack Alzheimer's disease very particularly, um, it's, uh, one of the common themes is we're coming up with stuff that could very well, uh, almost very likely, be also used to attack uh, other diseases. Yes, we're in, we're by concentrating on some of the common mechanisms, like inflammation, in all neurodegenerative diseases, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Lou Gehrig's, et cetera, there's inflammation and subsequent to the pathology. And if you can find a magic bullet in all these cases that doesn't al allow the brain to overreact to pathology and become too inflamed, you're going to help all those diseases all at once. So. If we find a drug that hits CD33 on the microglial cells and figure out a way to keep those microglial cells happy and, and protect, protective in the brain rather than killing the brain, that's going to be useful for all neurodegenerative diseases where inflammation is the final thing that takes you out. Um, you know, like, likewise, with the metal, you know, finding these metals that interact with the pathology. If you have a drug like I think we do, hopefully, that safely removes that drug from the pathology, then that would be useful for all these different diseases. That's why the same drug is being tested in Huntington's and Alzheimer's disease. In both cases, it's copper that binds to the pathology and drives the, uh, the cell, nerve cell death, and according to that, that hypothesis, which started in my lab in the early 90s and you know, still working hard on the, the drug. 
Rudy, again, thank you for your time and thanks for all your great work. Thank you.